Okay, about to get started on Zenith number two. This is the one I've had for about three years now. And if, as you can see, if you compare the videos, this one has a little bit different chassis in it. This one's actually got some metal. Look at that fly back there. That's it's pretty neat looking. Well, anyway, this one's been having color issues and such. And I want to try to see if I can tweak some of that out. It's also been having like intermittent static issues and what have you and such. And we'll see what we can do about that. If anything, first off, I'm going to try to clean these controls up here. This is the this is the uh, color controls like the uh, like I was working on with the other set that they're just a little bit different. There's a few more controls up front there, so. Oddly enough, it seems to have less wiring harnesses going to it. So yeah, we're going to take a little while with this set and see if we can get some better performance out of it. All right, I've uh, pretty much given this set the same treatment that. Uh, I've given the other Zenith chassis and we're going to see what it looks like right now. And I've got to hook up the ta ta TV cable. Four-month-old Jewel, Courtney, you are, are, are the father. That's a little better. So that was then. Here's the good news. They got married, Brittany and Courtney. Nothing to live, Lori. Here's the bad news. Brittany now thinks he's cheating. Yes, he And has been doing that all along. You proved to him that he was the father. Now, he's been cheating all along? Three months after we left, we got married. I went and married him, you know, if I thought that this was going to happen. But he's... I got yeah, I have the switch on the color sentry, which... Wait, 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 wait. What did he say about the scratches? He the 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 branch. Ain't no paper to rub your thing like that. The color level control. It's producing a pretty good black and white right at the moment. Now the flashing is what I'm trying to look out for. There's a flickering. Your sister Amber has your back, doesn't she? Yes, this is my sister. She's been here. Brought to you by MCMB Bank's Trust and Financial Services Division. We're community minded, just like you. Trouble don't seem to be at the antenna connection, cable connection, what have you. The black and white's really good on this grayscale. Tent. 
Still got the flickering thing going on. See? I hope. Put an AFC AFC switch. It's the AFC. I assume that's the AFC on. This is SPCL. And there's the band switch, which is. Can be kind of finicky for some reason. I don't know if you can hear this right off hand, but and I've noticed this was the set off, off and on, but kept forgetting about it. Yeah, it's screaming, high pitch whine. I can't really pinpoint where that's coming from. Color simply don't look too good for some reason. We'll get back to that in a second, but let me show you with these tubes why we're so excited about it, why I still think it's a valuable asset for us. These tubes represent blood vessels in our body. These are plaques that begin to develop even in our 20s in most of us. Certain foods, this represents some of the foods you should not be eating, actually contribute to plaque buildup. They're like slop, right? They look like this and they enter your body and they stay there. Not surprisingly, it's fat colored. All right, so this kind of stuff creates this kind of scenario in your blood vessel, ultimately closing it off, putting you at risk. Red palm fruit oil is rich in antioxidants, as Bryce mentioned, and when you pour it in there, it sweeps away the plaque. There's a difference. Now, which artery do you want to live with? This one or this one? It's pretty clear you want to have the one that had the red palm fruit oil. So, Bryce, after you were with me last time we talked about this, people began appropriately getting this stuff because it works. Uh, and after we touted the health benefits, I got a letter from Jane Goodall. She's devoted her life to the welfare of chimpanzees. She's not written me before, and I wouldn't uh, expect in this note. She said she was concerned that my recommendation would have a harmful effect on force. So Bryce traveled halfway around the world to investigate one of the world's biggest suppliers of palm oil. Here's what he found. It was a grassroots investigation from deep in the jungles of Malaysia to the country's high-tech laboratories. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that I'm issue, here, but... At the and, and I'm here to know how these animals are doing. These guys, to me... Sometimes the squealing becomes intermittent when... when was a country struggling to give an increasingly demanding... Power control is turned down and stuff. ...without damaging the environment. And placed many researchers, doctors, and scientists committed to wildlife preservation, healthcare, and animal transportation out of the plantations and See? back into their natural habitats. Malaysia's eco-friendly approach to providing these life-saving natural remedies is becoming a model for the world to follow. First, thanks for making the trip. Uh, you're, you're always very responsive. So, are, are you still concerned? 
And what should we do if we're really destroying the, the world because of buying red palm oil? Well, we have to be concerned because what we knew and what we still know is in some countries, not in Malaysia as far as I can tell and recount, there is, you know, numbers of lush forests just being wiped away and we're concerned about that not just the environmental uh, impact but as well this destroys the habitat for these rhinos and orangutans and these beautiful animals that they, they live there we can't do that that's not responsible they are however and i've remained very optimistic in many parts of the world including malaysia growing palm oil in a very sustainable form so the red table for sustainable palm oil is a world initiative to ensure Let's see that turned off. I think red palm tree oil is extremely healthy for you, but I want you to start looking for with the RSPO trademark. It looks like this. We checked online, and many companies that make it very clear that the red palm tree oil has its RSPO trademark. Once you see that, you're good to go. We'll be right back. What's that scary lump on your wrist? So calm, and a lot of you have it right now. See, there, it's will and stop for a little while. So maybe I can tweak some adjustments on here and maybe get that to stop. All right. Seems like I've traced it down to the flyback. Uh, seems like it's seems like that coil is singing or something because it's uh, you know obviously it becomes very hissy back here when I tune to a blank channel on the set. So I'm going to seek some advice about that. And we'll come back. Now see it's uh, turned back to a squeal again. It's almost an afterthought. But I tightened up these screws on the flyback area right here. These, these nuts I mean. They were a little bit loose. That's the wrong driver. So I don't know if that might help with that squealing issue or not. I doubt it could hurt it. <laughs> so let's plug it in. See what it does. I was just about to button up the set. This set scans automatically when you plug it in. Still hear some hissing in the area.
it's Luma's wheel there. This four don't seem to be as bad. So maybe I can continue, try continuing on tightening up these bolts a little bit. There's a few others in the area. Alright, I don't know if I really got anything done with this video or not, but uh, it seems like the set is still squealing around the flyback area. And uh, for now, I'm just going to end this video. I've uh, I've been given the suggestion that I could put some silicone in the flyback area. I need to figure out how to do that. So we'll uh, end this video for right now. Thanks for watching, and God bless. And if you want to, stay tuned for some bloopers. All right, I've given this set pretty much the same treatment that uh, Z the other Zenith chassis. The, oh gosh, 